are in the session 1b, we are looking at the conference papers in the engineering domain and after Professor Kannan's part, I am going to talk essentially about graphics. But we already know that the questions which a reviewer or a reader of a paper looks at are the following. What is being studied? Are there experiments to talk about or computations or both? What is the domain of interest? What is the procedure? How good are the results? If, uh, experimental uncertainties of the result. What are the actual results and how do they compare with other results, other work either by the same team or by some different team. Graphic is an important part. So, the tools used are diagrams, tables, charts, equations showing domain of computations or experiment, block diagrams, flow charts, tables of test cases or table of results and the results themselves in various forms, right from simple graphs to block diagrams to ISO lines or equipotential lines and things like that. Uh, as uh, Dr. Sahana said earlier that a reviewer is going to look first after a few words or sentences in the abstract and maybe intro on what are the visual contents, not really the equations, but the, the figures. And let me digress a bit, you know one of the greatest children's books Alice in Wonderland was written by a mathematician and the reason he wrote the books was that his one day he was engrossed with his books, he was also a famous author of books and his daughter came around and say, how can this book be interesting, there are no figures in it, no pictures. So, that is why if you look up the original edition of uh, Alice in Wonderland, maybe I could have had a graphic here. It shows very nice pictures, including the long tail uh, in verbal form. Okay, maybe I will find that and put it up on Moodle somewhere. Figures and graphics being the most important part are of various kind and are used for various purposes. They provide the first impression of any conference paper, in fact of any paper for that matter. Okay. They need to be prepared with care and after having said that, you know Professor Kannan said that you write things first and then go to a machine to typeset it. In a similar way, a figure should be sketched first on first in your mind then on a piece of paper and then you use either the classical drawing board graph paper or use X-Rig or whatever package you want to use. But something which uh, I do not think anybody mentioned that conference papers are always written to a deadline and although we would like to have a paper ready and then look for an appropriate conference, in any research team it works the other way. We get a brochure or an email or suddenly somebody looks up on a website, oh this is the deadline for a conference and what do we have to provide to the conference. So, whatever you do, it is uh, the deadline was yesterday, we wake up today and we do things. So, what I am going to do in the rest of this thing is provide you illustrations taken from well good conference papers presented and published uh, the work of my colleagues. And once you start looking at it, you will find some figures which are not so good and some figures which are good. I am not going to illustrate, I am not going to talk much, maybe a few words to show what could have been better and something else in which notice how this is better than the earlier one. I am going to uh, classify my illustrations as domain of computation and then block diagrams and such stuff. Now, quite often when you do some computation, you have a domain of computation and that has to be very nicely shown. Now, here you will see a domain of computation fitted in one column of a paper. Usually a paper, conference paper is in two column format. Most of the journal papers also nowadays are in two column format. And you will notice here that it has a funny aspect ratio. Why is this funny aspect ratio? 
Well, in this domain you will notice here a small h equal to 1 and here it is 30 h. Okay. So, the aspect ratio is 1 is to 30, but the actually depicted aspect ratio is not 1 is to 30. But even then, notice that the action is really here. This is where the real information lies. The boundary conditions at the top surface, bottom surface and the right hand are more or less benign. So, you look at the small clutter here. What perhaps the author could have done was cut this figure into two with those, you know, disconnection lines or and enlarge the aspect ratio effectively or put a circle here and show the big expansion of this particular clutter in a circle. The next illustration is better. The clutter has been reduced, the information which is needed is reasonably clearly seen. Of course, sometimes the situation is, this is another reasonably good example of information provided in a figure. They say a figure is equivalent to a thousand words, but even then a figure usually needs to be supported by some text and it is always a choice whether to point to a figure and provide the text and information or to put the information in the figure itself. This is an illustration of a, a reasonably good figure in which the information is provided on the figure itself. The next illustration, well this perhaps is the neatest simplest figure, but you do not have such clarity always. This is a very simple situation where everything about the geometry is provided in this figure and by this maybe you can get rid of half a dozen sentences and maybe a few lines in the nomenclature, because the nomenclature is very clear from this figure itself. Next we come to domain of experiments, where you have to tell something or inform something about the experimental setup. Now, usually in any experimental setup, there is something called a test section, where the action really happens. Okay. Other things are data logger, you know some chilling unit, some power control unit, some AC DC converter and all that. But now see in this figure it has so happened that the test section occupies a very small part and you do not really see what the test section is about. Okay. Whereas, these peripherals occupy a very significant part and the, the really significant part occupies an insignificant part. Do not let this happen. This figure is maybe okay as the first figure in your experimental setup chapter in a report or a thesis is definitely not okay for a paper of any kind. Whereas, look at this. Here you have a figure in which the essentials are very clearly shown. And now you will notice that, well, to DC power supply, that is it. You have not shown the DC power supply, stabilizer, connection to mains, nothing like that. So, come to the heart of the problem and show whatever is required in very clear picture. This is another figure where a schematic of a beam is shown, a variable width beam. And you will notice that the required information is shown here. In fact, how it is clamped here, how it is clamped here, that is just not shown because that is not of importance. Similarly, you have shown a voltage supply here, providing a potential difference between the fixed electrode and the movable electrode, which is the beam. Details of that voltage supply, you will find it somewhere else in the text or maybe in another figure, if it is important. We now come to a flow chart. For some reason, I could not get a bad and a good example of a flow chart. What I have here is a reasonably good example of a flow chart. Of course, there are flow charts with quite a few things, flow charts with much of a clutter, but this perhaps is a reasonably good illustration of a flow chart. Next thing, block diagram. 
again the block diagram should be go back to our experimental sketches. Block diagram should contain only the essential blocks and should not have any clutter. So, notice here the essential blocks of two measuring cells electrical system and the computer which manages the whole thing is shown. Current from a constant current source that is out of the block diagram. The block diagram has not been made cluttered by showing the how the constant current source is created and what is the original source of power. Now, quite often the information is provided in the form of a table and again whether you use LaTeX or whether you use any other uh, package. One mistake we quite often do is we allow the package to dictate things to us and that means we use the default settings in the package. If you use a package one thing you should necessarily do is go through the manual, get some practice on the package and see how to overwrite the defaults. For example, column weights whether the data is centered or left justified or right justified all these things are within our control provided we learn how to exercise that control. Now, you will see here that you have a table well perhaps too many columns, but maybe they are necessary. But now you will notice that there is a large amount of white space in each column, unnecessary white space. If you were to make the titles of this more cryptic or put them in two lines, okay, you would have reduced the column width, you could have centered this and reduced the white space and because of that you could have had better clarity, you could have then even increased the line spacing a bit and made it more clear. In the same paper or a similar paper, we have I think this is from the same paper, we have a reasonably good table. The only fault I can find with this table is that perhaps they should have centered the data in each cell. Okay. Well, for some reason my presentation is in two parts. So, the first 20 slides are over, I have to go to the second set of 20 slides. Okay. Now, all of us have drawn graphs right from our school days. And graphs are of various kinds and the rest of my uh, speech I will talk about graphs simple graphs. This is some experimental work and you will find something is plotted against something else, temperature against percent enhancement in thermal conductivity. What is wrong with this graph? You will find that there are no graduation lines at all. If you want to know what is the percent enhancement here, even if you use a scale, you will make an error in reading that. This is another graph which is better, less clarity. The disadvantage is that here again reading is better, you have graduations, but the graduations are only on one side. So, you will have to visually consider a line to for example, to read this particular point. In fact, graduations and blocking is important if you have multiple lines on the same graph because now you want to know how much is the difference between the situation here and the situation here slightly above that here, here or here. This perhaps is a is an illustration of a good graph. Notice that there are nice graduations, but the whole graph is in a a rectangular block and the graduations are not only on the bottom, they are also on the top, they are on the left as well as on the right. So, consequently if I want to read some point here, you will notice that you can simply visually connect these two or take a scale and connect these two and exactly read where that point is either on the x axis or on the y axis. 
also notice now from the paper when I grabbed it the circles have not exactly remained circles, but you will notice that the thickness of the circle is used to indicate that the authors are not sure of the exact location of the experimental points and that is because of measurement errors. They could have used a plus sign or a cross sign, but they did not use that because with a plus sign you tend to consider that the intersection of the vertical and the horizontal line is the exact point where you are, here there is nothing like that. Quite often when you solve problems related to fields, whether electrical, stress, uh, population densities or flow, you tend to plot contour lines. Depending on your stream, this will be known as equipotential lines or stream lines or isotherms or iso wells. And let us see how these are plotted. First, is this a good example? I do not think I have to take a poll. And you can even relate this to one of the earlier figures. The action is here, the action is here, but that is too cluttered. Here there is hardly any action and you know unnecessarily maybe half width, slightly more than half the width of the uh, column is wasted in that. Perhaps the author could have provided only this part of the figure and enlarged it three times this way and three times that way and mention it so that part of the domain. And beyond that there is hardly any action, we are interested in this zone and this zone, that is where the real action lies. This is better, okay, but of course here the domain is rectangular, it was this is a figure which occupied one whole column of a paper, so I just want you to look at the central figure. A few, uh, I think here there are these are ISO bars, contour levels, Pascal, so these are ISO bars and they have been very clearly shown, whether here, here or in the next figure. Nowadays packages are available which show contour lines in color or they fill up a field with different color shades to give you an idea of how hot things are locally or how fast or slow or concentrated things are locally. And earlier maybe till about 10 years ago, papers whether in journal or in conference were essentially published in black and white. Now that is not so because the printing in color is not very costly, but nowadays many conference proceedings are not even printed, they are just given to you on an electronic medium or they are put on a website. So, color is no issue at all. Most of us have a color terminal these days. So, let us see some illustrations of good use of color and bad use of color. Now, I have a figure here, look at this part. Contour lines are shown in color, but I think this figure is essentially wasted. Because although you have a wide uh, variation, you will find that the action is here and here. Maybe they have used a scale, the same scale for all figures in the paper, which is not a good idea. Perhaps they could have stretched this, so that you could have a better <laughs> variation. In the same paper, fortunately, I found an illustration of a much better use of color. Now, this is the same situation, you will see, but some other things are being shown and here I consider this, this as well as this to be a reasonably well managed use of color contours. Almost the whole range is used and the action also is nicely spread out over the domain, here, here as well as here. So, this is contour of x displacement, contour of y displacement or something like that. Okay. So, that brings me to the end of my small presentation. My job was to just 
illustrate graphics and rather than tell you how to make graphics, all that I have done is uh, provided you illustrations of good graphics and illustrations of not so good graphics. I have grabbed these graphics from my colleagues papers and I acknowledge them for providing their papers for use as illustrations. Uh, I agree that what you have seen on the screen here is not very good. Maybe you have not been able to see some of those figures to appreciate the good points and the bad points. But I am told these slides, their original PDF version will be put on Moodle. There you will be definitely able to spend maybe a few minutes on each figure appreciating the good parts of that figure and bad parts of that figure. Thank you very much.